Tonight at 11, case closed. After 40 years, the FBI speaking on the murder of a 14-year-old Red Bluff girl. What happened to the killer? Secret Witness is looking for answers after the death of a two-year-old in 2013. A big reward offered to anyone with information. A warm-up hitting the valley, but how long is it sticking around? Plus, dense fog advisories on the coast. Everything you need to know. A new Reading health officer, more on his qualifications, what the community has to say. The North State's news starts right now. Live, local, breaking, news you can trust. This is the North State's News at 11. Good evening. Welcome to the North State's News at 11. I'm Ariana Martinez. We're continuing coverage on the decades-old cold case out of Tehama County. The Tehama County Sheriff's Office says 14-year-old Rochelle Ward was killed in Red Bluff by Johnny Coy. Deputies say in March of 1983, Ward was abducted while walking to school on South Jackson Street. Hours later, her body was found on the Pine Creek Bridge. Reports say she was bound, sexually assaulted, then shot. At the time, technology was not advanced enough for DNA evidence. Deputies still collected samples of evidence that were used to solve the case decades later. For years, deputies worked on the investigation. They followed several leads, sorting through potential suspects. At one point, Henry Lee Lucas, better known as the confession killer, said he killed Ward. It was later found to be a false confession. The case stayed open through the 90s and early 2000s. It eventually went cold. In 2022, detectives discovered a rootless strand of hair collected at the scene that did not belong to the victim. Using advanced DNA technology, an FBI team identified Johnny Coy as the murderer. Coy died in 2019, serving time for a different crime. The FBI spoke on solving the decades-old case earlier today. These cold cases are really bittersweet where it's unfortunate Coy is not going to be held responsible in the uh, terms of a current investigation and a, a prosecution, but hopefully this does provide a bit of closure. DA Matt Rogers says if Coy was alive today, he would be charged for the crimes against Rochelle Ward. The office says they hope this brings closure to Ward's family. The full story can be found on our website, krcrtv.com. Shasta County Circuit Witness is offering a $10,000 reward for information on the death of a toddler out of Red Bluff. In 2013, two-year-old Scarlett Peterson was reportedly severely abused by an adult. She was taken to the hospital in bad condition later that day. She was transferred to Mercy Medical Center, then transferred to Sacramento Hospital, where she died. Officials say her death was not an accident. It was the result of abuse. Her social history indicates the toddler was living with her parents at the time, occasionally under the care of her uncle. In 2013, a report said there was bruises found on the child's back, which the mother says were not there prior to leaving the child with her uncle. If you have any information on this case or any other case in Shasta County, you can leave a tip at the Secret Witness of Shasta County website. You can remain anonymous while leaving information. You can also call the number you see on your screen. For the latest on breaking news, download the KRCR News Channel 7 mobile app. All you have to do is search KRCR in your device's app store. Don't forget to turn on push notifications to get alerts about wildfires, traffic alerts, plus all the latest local news. And now let's check in with first alert meteorologist Brian Schofield. Brian, I know this is a new one coming in, but we were watching on the north coast for fog. It's been in the morning yesterday and again right now. That's right. The past few nights, dense fog advisories. Today, no different. Now it's in. It's in the, in the works. Reduce visibilities. Be extra careful out there. It'll last through the early morning hours, but the actual uh, beach hazard for high surf is going to last through the afternoon and evening hours. So you might be able to see that color right there. Maybe not Del Norte, this gray line right there, all throughout northern Humboldt and northern Mendocino, but not through southern Humboldt. But really all up along the coast, we're still talking about beach hazards with high surf, threat of sneaker waves, which are oh so dangerous, and of course strong currents. But really be on the lookout overnight for those reduced visibilities. That could be very dangerous for you. And we're still watching Bay Area heat. I mean, look, come on now. A heat advisory till 11 p.m. tomorrow. 
We've got heat of our own, but it's not going to be 100 degrees. If anything, it'll be more 90s on the way, just like today. I can't wait to show you those numbers coming up. High pressure on board, sticking around. It's also going to mean clear skies and calm winds for tonight. So these are your overnight lows. Hard to believe you hit the 90s today when we're hitting those 50s for tonight. 30s in the upper elevations and even some 40s popping into the picture. But then we're going to see the temperatures tank and we're going to bring in uh, probably through even next week some rainfall. That's coming up in your first alert forecast. Redding has a new police chief who is hardly new to Redding. Former Captain Brian Barner was unanimously appointed chief by the city council last night. Anchor Mike Mangas sat down with him today. Inspired by his father Tom's career in law enforcement, Brian Barner has wanted to be a cop since he was three or four years old. The Shasta County native started his career at Shasta High, then as a cadet, the police academy, and has worked his way up the ladder getting experience in virtually every aspect of the Reading Police Department. Now, as of Tuesday night, he's the chief, following in the footsteps of Bill Schuler. It's a good time to take over uh, the, the keys to the car that Bill just gave me, you know, that the car's running well. So now my job is to, to keep the people that we have, the good people that we have here, uh, make sure they don't leave and go somewhere else, and you know, provide them the training and... Uh, the, the, the opportunity to, to grow and, and the opportunities that I had as a young police officer. And, uh, but yeah, this, this, this department is very near and dear to me. It's, it's a family for sure. Now, former Chief Schuler says Brian's local ties will make a big difference. He knows this community, the community knows him, so that's a good thing, I think. Then bringing, it's way better than bringing somebody from the outside and having to train him not only on the culture and what's going on in the department, but teach them about our community. He already has all that in his back pocket. So, yeah, it's really good to have him step into this role. Makes me feel good walking out the door. One of the new chief's priorities, making Reading a safe, nice place to live. We've put a lot of money into downtown, and, and downtown looks amazing compared to when I was a kid and the old mall downtown. Uh, but now it's up to us to... You know, we're full staff, but we really need to start focusing on those quality of life issues and, uh, and making sure that we're cleaning up the city. Brian's predecessor has one piece of advice. You're constantly getting beeped with these things, and, uh, and it's seven days a week, 365 days a year, right? It never stops. And uh, so you, uh, you have to take the time to disconnect for a couple weeks at a time and and just let your, let your staff run the place and take care of yourself and your family. Brian is excited, he's humbled and ready to go. One of his ideas is creating a Citizens Academy to let people know how the department works. Shasta County Supervisors officially appointed Reading Dr. James Moo as the county's new health officer last night. He will assume the role on Monday, October 23rd. However, the local medical community has differing views on Dr. Moo. He has no public health background, um, neither does he have an MPH or two years of experience, and he currently is not board certified. I think he just needs to, as I said yesterday, take himself and his personal perspective out and look at what's good for the community as a whole. To clarify, that physicians are extensively and deeply trained in epidemiology training and public health during their four year of medical school and three year of residency, which is Dr. Moose successfully completed, including family practice residency. And family practice residents are smarter than any specialist, I can tell you that, and I'm sure Dr. Nina Perry will agree with me. Supervisor Mary Rickard alluded to the, this during discussion regarding Dr. Mu. We have confirmed with multiple sources with knowledge of the selection committee that the overwhelming majority of the committee actually wanted a different outside doctor to take the health officer position, not Dr. Mu. What changed and why? We will dig into this and bring you answers. We want to make a correction from last night's newscast. We previously previously reported the Fountain Wind project was approved last night's in Shasta County Supervisors meeting. We want to clarify it was only the budget to inform the public of the Fountain Wind project that was approved. This includes a media campaign along with a budget of $100,000. We took some criticism for taking a little too long to abate the lab and now I think the public can understand why. Uh, we wanted to make sure that we had a legally defensible strategy for eliminating this hazard. 
The owner of an illegal biological lab in Central California now threatening legal action. Next on the North States News. First, here's a live look over Redding from our Hasselrood Law Skycam. A warm, beautiful today. Can you believe there's chances of rain coming soon? A look at our full forecast in just a bit. Back, we have an update to a story we first told you about a month ago. The owner of an illegal biological lab in Reedley is now threatening to sue the city of Reedley and the county of Fresno for a total of $80 million. The owner of the lab is claiming the city and county caused irreparable harm. Reporter Sophia Lasso spoke with a representative with the city of Reedley who says they are not intimidated by this claim. Our public was traumatized in finding out about this lab, in having to go through the process of watching us abate and seize the property. And now it's like the trauma is being dredged back up again. Back in May, the county of Fresno issued a closure for a secret biological lab in Reedley. Over 800 chemicals were found by the CDC along with blood, tissue, bodily fluid samples, medical waste, diseases, and hundreds of mice. Now, the lab operator has slapped the city of Reedley and the county of Fresno with damage claims totaling to $80 million. I am very surprised, shocked in fact, because this whole process we've moved very methodically, um, very clearly through the court system, and we have had judges sign off on court orders for every step we've taken. So we're really at a loss to know why they think they have rights to anything. Friday, the city of Reedley sent Universal MedTech Inc. an invoice of $310,000 for cost recovery of taxpayer money used during the investigation. On Monday, UMI sent its claim to the city. The company is stating in both claims to the city and the county, it unlawfully seized mice and destroyed assets. UMI is asking for $30 million in damage from the city and $50 million from the county. It's not like we went in with nothing. We had backup documentation, data, pictures, um, and it took a while for the judge to sign off on those. In the summer, the city of Reedley and Fresno County received complaints from the public for taking several months to investigate. Council member Gary Bredefeld even held a news conference asking, why did it take so long to be released to the public? We took some criticism for taking a little too long to abate the lab, and now I think the public can understand why. Uh, we wanted to make sure that we had a legally defensible strategy for eliminating this hazard. In the claim to the city, it states the biological lab never had viruses and bacteria that seriously endangered the public. We have a public CDC report that documents over 20. Right now, Reedley City Manager says this threat is not scaring them. The city of Reedley is not going to be intimidated by this. We intend to fully pursue cost recovery and we will fight this claim. The reporter reached out to UMI's lawyer for an interview but have yet to hear back. If the claim is denied by the county and Fresno and city of Reedley, UMI can then file a lawsuit in court. Still some warmer days ahead. Yeah, we're kind of getting them going. We're not done. we got a couple more left. Dry this week, but not next week and not the weekend necessarily. I'll show you why in your first look forecast coming. Good morning, NorCal Think Pink will be heading out, handing out resource bags in Redding at the Tri-Counties on Hilltop as well as the downtown branch on South Street from 6 to 9 in the morning. Then from 5 to 8 at night, the resource fair is back at the Sundial Bridge. There will be resource booths, food trucks with other local entertainment. NorCal Think Pink says when caught early, breast cancer has a 98% survival rate. It's really important to, for all of us to prevent breast cancer, to stop it before it even starts, to do your monthly exams and to know your normal and to take care of yourself and to be your own advocate and, and uh, to, to catch the cancer before it even gets started. Mm -hmm. And that's our goal here in, in Chasta County. That video earlier, you could tell those were older videos because it's so much brighter outside. We'll show you that in a bit. This event is free, open to everyone. They even have a shuttle from the Mount Shasta Mall near the JCPenney area, which will take you to the sundial between 430 and 845 tomorrow night. 
Now we're looking at a chime in photo submitted by Bonnie and Anguano. She says she was driving with her husband on I-5 near the Oasis when she captured this angelic photo. Thank you so much, Bonnie, and good job for doing it safely and letting your husband drive while you take this picture. She says she didn't notice it until today that it kind of looks like a wolf howling, and you can see that right there at the top. It does look really cool. Brian, what do you think about that? With grizzly, the grizzly bear I'm seeing in that. <laughs> Okay. Uh, we should Grizzly get people's bear. opinions of what they say. Thank you. Okay, good, good. I'm not, I haven't lost my mind. I have to wince. What do you call the light that shines out of the cloud like that? You already, are, you, are you testing me for real? I'm asking. I don't know. Crepuscular rays. <laughs> there you go. I knew. Do you, did you know so that? Fancy. Did you try to set me up? <laughs> I, know. I know exactly what they are. I knew you were smart. I knew you had the answer. Also known as Jacob's Ladder. Oh. Yes, if you don't want to sound crepuscular y. Anyway, folks, we did not practice that. She's just trying to keep me on my toes. 63, but it's a bear. Not a wolf. Anyway, 63, not bad. Nice as the sundial right now. I'll tell you, let's show off some temperatures. Let's do something, some business here. 84, beautiful Shingletown, not bad at all. And Reading at 93, did it feel like that today? I felt like it felt warm, but not too warm. Very spring-like. All tourists, you were spring-like today in the 80s. 80s really all across the board. Upper 70s, uh, Lake Almanora, really, but uh, still a very nice. That's a nice day right there. 87, Chico, we're calling for 90 tomorrow. We're hitting those 90s today, which put us so close to records. And the recent record from 2020, 95 degrees. Tomorrow's record, 99. So we're not going to get that close. But technically, we should get warmer than this for tomorrow. We're calling for 93 tomorrow. But if tomorrow's the apex of our heat, then I probably should bump the numbers up. I'm just going to throw that out there. We're not going to mess with the numbers. But we'll just tell you that. You could be 95 tomorrow, but it will not be a record. Either way, relatively clear, except for the dense fog along the coast, right? So I'm glad we gave you that advisory just to kind of give you an idea, the reduced visibility. You know how that always can play trouble along the, the roadway. So especially when it's dark, right? Makes sense. Uh, but definitely seeing high pressure have, that has built on in, sticking around for a couple more days before it just squeezes out toward the east and that allows some cooler air to get in. And once it does, we're also going to bring in a little chance for some rain. And this cooler air is going to settle in for the end of the weekend and then we'll see a reinforcement come through by early next week. That could potentially bring some wintry type weather in to some areas to our north. We'll be watching that even closer for next week if the computer models are telling us the truth. Let's see if we're picking up what they're putting down. Definitely you're seeing the, those temperatures uh, pretty nice, but as far as the sky cover is concerned, we know where the temperature is going to be down. But most of Saturday, you'll keep relatively dry, just a lot of cloud cover. But then in the evening, obviously, this rain shows up overnight into Sunday, and that's when it's area wide. Actually, could see a few thunderstorms too. That don't count anything out with this system coming through. We're not done with the thunderstorms. Sometimes we just see showery kind of, uh, you know, areas of, uh, you know, pockets of rainfall. But this time we'll probably see a little bit of energy too. So anyway, it's gone by Monday. See how Monday clears out nicely? So we're going to still call for that for being mostly sunny. I mean, it might be partly cloudy at times in Del Norte County and Western Siskiyou. But then we bring in that next system right there. That's some, that's some significant cool down. That, we expect uh, northern Nevada to be that cold, but it's going to be chilly through Modoc and parts of Siskiyou. We'll see how much that can uh, push its way down through the Sierra. So in general, uh, warmer tomorrow all across the board, but still some of that dense fog and then cooler for the weekend. Cooler yet. Look at that, 50s for next week. Uh, we're talking 80s for Weaverville, 80s for Lewiston tomorrow. Just very nice temperatures across the board. Uh, 82 Fall River Mills, 84 in Bernie. And down the valley, like I said, I'm calling for 93, but potentially we could be warmer than that. Either way, we'll be right there in the 90s through, for the most part. And, uh, definitely seeing temperatures on the uh, warm side through Chico as well. We're calling for 90 there now. We bumped it up from 89. Just call it a day, right? Uh, 87 on Friday. And then you can see the drop in temperatures for the end of the weekend. And then for later on in the week, as we start to see uh, the chances for rain improve, uh, but maybe not so much in the 60s for Chico. You folks there will see it all later on. We'll get it first here in Reading, and then so we get in those 60s, and you'll probably stay in the 70s. But still a decent first half of the weekend, and the rest of the week looks as good. All right, back to you. The Capusta open space in southern Reading is closed to the public for a few weeks while the city works on a salmon restoration project. The open space at the end of Latona Road off Highway 273 is closed through Friday, November 17th to build the Capusta Island fish habitat. It will be right next to the channel restoration project that was finished last year. These are both just some of the projects being funded by a $10 million grant from the Central Valley Project Improvement Act to to restore salmon habitat along the Sacramento River. 
Pacific Core will see nearly $100 million in federal funds to help improve their grids across California and Oregon. With the funds, the electricity company is hoping to reduce outages across the board, specifically outages which have impacted the local Yurok tribe. They'll also be improving their fire safety protocols in fire-prone communities such as Del Norte County. Starting next month, the Yurok tribe will begin a program meant to widen discussions on parenting within the tribe. The Positive Indian Parenting Program begins November 7th with classes every Tuesday and Thursday. It will focus on providing parents with information and cultural, culturally specific training on the various ways to raise American Indian children. The program will continue for up to 10 weeks. All classes will be held through Zoom. The Yurok tribe is also launching a new after-school program meant to empower young elementary school children in the tribe. The program, titled Auntie's Way, will run through this school year, aiming to provide young women with wellness and prevention resources. The classes will run on Mondays, Thursdays, and Fridays in various elementary schools throughout the Yurok tribe. When we come back, STD rates rising for pregnant mothers, some health advocates calling it for a safe state of emergency. The U.S. military is putting more troops on standby in Netflix without ads coming at a high price. Big stories, local impacts, next. Back, we're looking at some big stories making local impacts. Health advocates are now calling on the president to declare a public health emergency after the number of babies born with congenital syphilis is the, in the U.S. has seen a sharp increase in recent years. The CDC says from 2017 to 2021, cases nearly tripled from 941 to more than 2,800 at a rate of 77 cases per 100,000 live births. There has been a nationwide shortage of the drug that used to treat mothers with that have the STD during pregnancy. Drug maker Pfizer says the shortage won't be resolved until 2024. A Pentagon official told ABC News roughly 2,000 U.S. troops have been put on a heightened state of readiness for possible deployment to the Middle East. The statement says, quote, no decisions have been made to deploy any forces at this time. The secretary will continue to assess our force posture and remain in close contact with allies and partners, end quote. This as President Biden was in Israel today, also drafting a $100 billion foreign aid package, including money for Israel and Ukraine. The price for a Netflix membership with no ads is increasing. It's now $23. The streaming giant's least restrictive plan with 4K video jumped $3 starting today. Netflix killed its single stream basic plan, but existing members can keep it for $12. People who don't mind being interrupted by ads won't see any change. You can still watch for $7. The new pricing comes as Netflix currently reported a 9% growth in paid memberships, reaching a whopping 247 million global subscribers. After the break, dogs are not only man's best friend, apparently they're kittens' best friends too. A husky donated blood to save a kitten's life. Details next. You tonight, here's a sweet story out of Nebraska. A dog donated blood to save a kitten's life. On Sunday, three kittens arrived at the animal shelter covered in fleas. Vets say they immediately noticed one of them it was much worse than the others. Thorne needed a blood transfusion immediately. When they could not find a cat to donate, a husky named Brett stepped in to help. Thorne will only have dog blood cells for a little bit. Vets say his cat blood cells will increase every day, and he's in great condition. The dog's full name is Brett Michaels, and the kitten's name com comes from the popular song, Every Rose Has Its Thorns. I think that's just so adorable, but science-wise, I was interested to hear that like cats and dogs can share... Yeah, did what? you know that it was even possible? I really did, did not. Did anyone know at home know it was possible? Probably a lot of people did, it was but I didn't interesting. Have no clue. What a sweet dog. Either. I love those names too. Right? I like it when you give it an I had a rabbit named John Cabot, so I just I'm throwing that out there. <laughs> TMI, but I like it when you give two names. Brett Michaels, that's a cool name for the dog. So it's nice. Very adorable. All right, that's enough. Do you guys is that too much information? Yeah, you don't need to. <laughs> no, we Everyone love it. Everyone at home Ryan. is falling asleep, right? Now. They're like, okay, that's enough for Schofield. Uh, I got no. those 90s checking in. John Cabot, see, get it? It says a rabbit. Okay, there you go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I figured you'd catch that. Anyway, got a lot of sunshine tomorrow in our peak temperatures. Back to you.
Thank you so much for watching KRCR News Channel 7 at 11. Jimmy Kimmel is up next. Make sure, make sure to join us right back here tomorrow for the latest news, weather, and sports.